I just wanted to come here. To Winkies? This Winkies. Okay. Why this one? You know that feeling you get when you watch a David Lynch film? Like, you can understand what is happening visually, but at a much deeper level, you just kind of get this sense that you're missing the bigger picture. Well, that's how I feel with a game like Gretzo 2. Probably one of the single biggest mind fucks I've ever experienced in gaming. Gretzo 2 is a mod for Doom 2, that is, well, if I had to pigeonhole Gretzo 2, I'd say it's like Brutal Doom meets Postal 2, only much more twisted. But it really just feels like someone grabbed a bunch of different mods for Doom and just mashed them all together. The main menu uses images from the crossed comic book series and the options menu is called Horse Shit, which pretty much tells you all you need to know about what the game has in store for you. But just what does Gretzo 2 have in store? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Let's just find out, shall we? So the story, as I could gather, is that you're just some random guy who has a real grudge against religion, as well as just everyday life in general. Anyway, in the game's opening, you bust into a church in the middle of mass and just start murdering everybody in the place, including senior citizens and priests, who eventually start firing glowing crucifixes at you. After you've caused enough mayhem, a vision of Jesus appears on the cross and starts attacking you before you turn into some sort of werewolf and kill him. That's still in the first five minutes of the game, mind you. Then you return home before you're swiftly killed and sent to heaven for judgment. After climbing the steps to meet God himself, you're resurrected and begin the journey through half a dozen or so levels to get back to your house. Most of the levels will take you 10 or 15 minutes to complete and they are humongous in size, offering up lots of secret areas and enemies to kill as you see fit. Now upon first loading up Gretzo 2, I was a little bit confused by the file size, but when you get into it, you quickly realise why it's so big. I think there'd have to be a good several dozen if not more weapons, most of which I don't even think I had a chance to use. There's sprites ripped from Blood, Redneck Rampage, Tech War, Doom obviously, as well as original textures that appear to be of various Italian celebrities and cultural figures. Then there's all the music, the voice work and sound effects in the game as well, there's a lot going on here. Sometimes there's so many sound effects and music tracks playing at once that everything just kind of gets mashed together and all you can hear is this distorted, blown out kind of buzzing effect, but that really only helps to make the game even more trashier. You've got all manner of shotguns, machine guns, rocket launchers, pistols and melee weapons and they all share the common trait of just turning enemies into showers of blood when you use them. If I had to pick a favourite weapon, I'd say it's the sort of sniper rifle meets railgun you get your hands on later in the game. It pretty much gives everything in a single hit and you've always got a lot of ammo for it, but honestly, it's hard to even pick a favourite weapon because you want to change weapons every few seconds if not just for experimentation. Regardless of what weapon you use, this game is pure carnage. There's screams, explosions and body parts flying everywhere and it's pretty damn entertaining. Gretzo 2 isn't perfect however, most of the levels throw you into one set place and just spawn in lots of enemies for you to murder as you see fit, but I did have a few instances when the next wave of enemies didn't spawn in and I had to restart the level to fix it. Stylistically I find the amount of blood and particles on the screen to kind of obscure my vision as well, alongside the weapon shape from firing guns that feels like the screen is having a seizure. As far as I could tell, there isn't any way to turn these visual settings off, so it can be a nuisance, especially in larger gunfights where you often can't distinguish where projectiles are coming from. But there is a surprising amount of content to get through in this game. The closest thing to a campaign will probably take you one or two hours to finish, but then there's a few bonus episodes as well which involve a driving minigame and then a series of survival waves. It also has a couple dozen multiplayer maps you can play through with bots, which will also take you a bit of time to get through as well. In terms of its content, Gretzo 2 should really be offensive, but it's so absurd and just over the top that it actually becomes kind of funny. If you take anything in this game seriously, then you're just going to completely miss the point. It's not really aimed at the type of people who take issue with something like transgender folk being underrepresented in gaming, or, you know, the way Cammy dresses. 
I mean, this is a game where you're hitting your balls with a hammer and killing old grannies with walking frames by roasting them alive with a flamethrower. To compare the way Gretzo represents normalcy to the way it's done in a game like Grand Theft Auto, for instance, is just moronic. And the moment I stepped into the carnival level and heard the theme from Stephen King's It playing in the background was when it all clicked. It's in bad taste, but it knows it, and it doesn't try to hide it at all, and you've got to admire that. I guess what I'm trying to say is that you can't play this game objectively. And if even Patricia Hernandez, someone who wrote an article about a passing comment in Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, can put her social justice baton down to enjoy this game, then I'm sure anyone can. The mod is easy to find with a quick Google search, and all you need to do to get it working is extract and double-click. 